Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. In this video, we'll give a demonstration of simple Oracle Document Access or SODA for SQLCL. SODA is a feature of Oracle REST Data Services, but this allows us to access the document store directly from SQLCL. We demonstrated SODA for REST in a previous video. It probably makes sense to watch that video before this. We'll assume you already have a suitable database with an ORDS installation. There are links in the description to explain how to do that, as well as a link to an ORDS YouTube playlist. We connect to a privileged user and create a test user called SODA user. We grant it the Create Session and Create Table privileges. We also grant it the SODA app role. We connect to the test user. We don't need to enable ORDS for the schema to use SODA for SQLCL, but this will enable SODA for REST also. We enable ORDS for this schema using the Enable Schema procedure in the ORDS package. We've used a URL mapping or schema alias that matches the username. We wouldn't normally do this, preferring to give a friendly alias. Documents are grouped into collections. It probably makes sense to keep different types of documents in separate collections, but you could keep a variety of documents in a single collection if you wanted to. We use the soda create command to create a new collection, passing the collection name, which is case sensitive. The soda list command displays all the available collections. On the database we can see a table has been created for the collection. Notice the name is quoted as it's case sensitive. The table is essentially a key value table. The ID is the key and the value is the JSON document column with the JSON stored as a blob. From 20C onward this is likely to use the new JSON data type. The soda drop command drops the named collection. The soda list command shows the collection has gone. The rest of the examples require the collection, so we'll recreate it. We can load documents using files or inline JSON. We have a file called employees.json with the following contents. We create a new document using the soda insert command, giving the collection name and the file name as parameters. The soda count command tells us how many documents are in the collection. In this example we define the document in line, rather than using a file. The soda count command shows us there are now two documents. We retrieve all document metadata using the soda get command, passing the collection name and the all flag. This displays the document key and created date. Using the minus k option allows us to return a specific document using the key. The minus k list option allows us to return multiple documents using a space separated list of keys. The minus f option allows us to use the query by example or QBE query string. We update an existing document by replacing it. We check the current document contents. We see the value apple. We use the soda replace command, passing the collection name, document key and the inline document to replace it with. We could use a file instead as we did with document creation. This returns the document key and a success message. We check the document contents again and we see the value has been updated to banana. The soda remove command deletes a document. We check the number of documents in the collection. We use soda remove passing the collection name and an identifier of the document to be deleted. 
In this case, we use the QBE option to identify the documents to delete. We could have used the minus K or minus K list options instead. We then check the number of documents in the collection and we can see one document has been removed. You'll typically be interacting with the document store using one of the programming APIs, but this should give you an idea of how SQLCL can be used to interact directly with the document store. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.